Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science, your weekly source for the latest science news. In the headlines this week, newly discovered fossilised hand bones reveal that a prehistoric human relative had gorilla-like hands. Evidence of a new giant prehistoric flying reptile has been discovered in Syria. The mechanism behind how emotional memories are stored long-term in the brain has been determined, and much more. Our top story this week is an exciting new paper documenting the first bones from the hand to be found from a species of prehistoric human relative called Paranthropus boisei. This kind of ancient hominin existed from at least 2.6 to 1.3 million years ago in Africa. Paranthropus is known as the robust Australopithecine due to its strengthened jaws, large molars and the conspicuous crest that ran along the top of the head to anchor powerful jaw musculature. These adaptions seem to have allowed Paranthropus to chew tough plants. However, apart from the skull remains and teeth, few other parts of these hominin skeletons have been confidently identified, as it's been very rare to find bones from the skeleton directly associated with diagnostic bones from the skull or teeth. Now though, a relatively complete hand and some foot bones have been discovered alongside Paranthropus cranial and dental fossils, the first time such bones have been identified with certainty. The hand displays a robust and long thumb plus a flexible little finger, similar to modern humans, meaning Paranthropus was quite dexterous. But the rest of the hand was surprisingly not very human-like at all. The finger bones themselves look almost exactly like those of modern gorillas, being remarkably robust, suggesting Paranthropus could flex its fingers powerfully. The researchers don't think Paranthropus was using its strong hands to climb regularly, since it doesn't have the curved finger bones of many tree-living primates. Instead, the revelation of gorilla-like hands suggests they were perhaps forcibly stripping plants such as grasses from the soil, and were potentially also wielding basic tools. It's a fascinating new glimpse into the anatomy of this ancient hominin, and suggests that studying gorillas could be a good way to learn more about the evolution of human hand manipulation. We have more news about research into ancient humans next, although this one is much more recent in timescale. In this new study, researchers analysed ancient chewed gum from the Neolithic and discovered traces of DNA from the people who chewed it, shedding light on the lives of Stone Age people in Europe. The team examined 30 samples of birch bark tar found in and around the Alps. This sticky substance, which was sometimes chewed, was widely used in ancient Europe for making tools and for various other purposes purposes, such as repairing ceramic containers. Remarkably, they discover human DNA in the tar, along with microbial DNA from the mouths of these prehistoric people and remnants of their food. Evidence that these early humans consumed wild plants alongside cultivated wheat and barley suggests that wild resources continue to be important in Neolithic diets. The study also determined the genetic sex of the individuals who had chewed the substance, revealing that male individuals tended to use the tar for hafting stone tools, while female individuals individuals were repairing pottery. However, the sample size was very small and the study warns that it's not a clear-cut example of division of labour at these sites. Nonetheless, it offers a fascinating glimpse into the past. Also in the prehistoric news this week, we've got a new species of dinosaur named Hue Recursa jaguensis. It was found in late Triassic rocks in Argentina, dating back approximately 230 million years. Hue Recursa, meaning wild runner, was an early member of the great sauropodomorph group of dinosaurs, the lineage that would eventually produce the largest land animals of all time, the titanic sauropods. This long-necked Triassic sauropodomorph is known from a remarkably complete skeleton, only really missing most of the skull and tail. Much of our understanding of early dinosaur evolution is thanks to discoveries made in certain Triassic rock layers in South America. However, Hue Recursa was unearthed at a site in the Andes that was previously unexplored. The paper describing this new dinosaur also reports a previously unknown assemblage of various Triassic animals from the same site, including other strange non-dinosaurian reptiles and cynodonts, relatives of mammals. Compared to other sauropodomorphs from the same site found elsewhere in South America, Hue Recursa is unusual for its larger size and longer neck, 
This significant discovery suggests that an increase in body size and neck length occurred in this dinosaur lineage relatively soon after their emergence, foreshadowing the eventual evolution of the largest terrestrial animals of all time. This week also saw the publication of a paper reporting the first ever pterosaur remains found in Syria. Excitingly, it's an Asdarkid pterosaur, the iconic lineage of these flying reptiles that includes the largest flying animals of all time. Fossils of Asdarkids have been discovered in the Middle East before, such as in Jordan, where bones belonging to the very long-necked species Aramborgiania were found. In this new paper, a fragmentary left humerus from a massive new Asdarkid is reported from rocks in Syria that date to the very end end of the Cretaceous period. It's not named as a new species due to its incompleteness, but comparing the size of the arm bone to other pterosaurs suggests it was a very large animal, as the humerus is only 10% smaller than the same bone in Quetzalcoatlus northropi, the biggest known as Darkid from North America. Interestingly, the Syrian Asdarkid was uncovered from marine sediments, indicating they were likely inhabitants of nearshore ocean environments, as well as continental interiors. Not only does the discovery highlight the potential for future fossil finds in understudy regions of the Middle East, but it also adds another piece to the emerging picture of these giant pterosaurs as highly successful and widespread animals. A study published this week in the journal PLOS1 details the analysis of skeletons found in a mass grave excavated in 2011 in Croatia. Discovered at the site of a Roman city, it was known from radiocarbon dating that the bodies were from the mid-3rd century. Upon further analysis, the team tells us that all seven bodies recovered were adult males who had a range of various injuries. In addition to this, analysis of the material means that, amazingly, we can tell the diet of these men, which was nearly entirely vegetable-based, with limited amounts of meat and an even more limited amount of fish. Further still, the researchers could tell us that the men's ancestry was mixed and that they were not from the local area. All this has led the authors to posit that these men were Roman soldiers, and their deaths would likely have been the result of an extreme or mass casualty event. Maths graves were not usually common for the soldiers of ancient Rome, and while the event that led to the deaths of these men could be a number of things, it is the crisis of the 3rd century that the authors believe to be the most likely. Another fascinating archaeological study showcasing just how much we can learn from finds such as these. In other news, researchers have discovered how specific memories are stored in the brain for the long term. This breakthrough could explain why we are able to remember emotional events so vividly and might also lead to new treatments for memory conditions like Alzheimer's and PTSD. It turns out that a type of cell in the brain, called an astrocyte, plays a key part in long-term memory stabilisation. It had previously been thought that astrocytes only played a supportive role to neurons when memories are formed, but this new research shows they are much more active than this. By measuring the expression of a certain gene in the astrocytes of mice, neuroscientists found that these cells became more active when the mice re-entered a cage linked to an unpleasant memory. Essentially, when entering a place associated with fear, the astrocytes became highly active, demonstrating that these cells are crucial for the creation of physical traces of memories in the brain. It's a fascinating insight into the cellular mechanisms involved in how emotional experiences are stabilised, and the potential for future work that could really help people with memory-related conditions is very exciting. Back into space now, as a study published in the Geophysical Research Letters has taken a closer look at some linear dune gullies on the surface of Mars, previously believed to have been the result of debris flowing down dunes due to the forces of liquid water. Recently, however, their formation has instead been linked to the movement of CO2 ice instead. This ice forms on the dunes during the Martian winter of that area, and then starts to break apart as the area warms. These blocks of CO2 ice then slide down the dune and can even burrow themselves into the sand. Due to the expulsion of high-pressure gas, these blocks of ice can be moved into their positions fairly violently. These processes were simulated during this study by recreating the Martian landscape and atmosphere, and slowly warming carbon dioxide ice to see what would happen. Obviously, it's a little more complicated than that, but that's the gist of it. So the scientists could actually see what was happening on the red planet before their very eyes. 
This study has brought yet more knowledge to the processes of Mars and brings us even closer to understanding how this planet that may harbour life works and changes over time. Well, that's it for the news this week. I really hope you enjoyed learning about everything that's happened in these last seven days of science. Be sure to email us at 7 stories at gmail.com if you have any research you'd like to see us cover or if you want to let us know how we can improve the show. You can follow 7 Days of Science on Instagram and TikTok and also be sure to support us on Patreon if you enjoy what we do here. As always a big thank you to our patrons including Andrew Kawam, Sang Yin, Chippy Chippy Chappa Chappa, Clara Middleton, Dina A. Bather, Diana Hernandez, Drub Strivastava, Gabriella, Gary Arrington, Giotist, I Rage, Jeroen Zuedewick, John French, Joseph Ree, Josh Lambert, Corey Peterson, Lena Rose, Mark Nevin, Matt Grandis, Mendicant Friar, Mike Pace, Monitor Man, Nicholas York, Ralph Balzac, Robert Pierpazica Jr., Robert Thomas, Sammy Patrikas, Steve Bradshaw, Thomas F. Conroy III, Timothy and Ted Rowe, Tracy Merrifield, and Troy Schmidt. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. Mendicant Friar, Mike Pace, Monitor Man, Nicholas York, Ralph Balzac, Robert Pierpazica Jr., Robert Thomas, Sammy Patrika, Steve Bradshaw, Thomas F. Conroy III, Timothy and Ted Rowe, Tracy Merrifield, and Troy Schmidt. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. <laughs>